This is the bath interferometer. Um, normally this paper's not here. Let's take that out. The uh, laser's here on the left. Beam hits the, the splitter. One beam goes through the a lens in this thing, and the beam spreads out. Let me show it here first. The second beam hits this, goes through the splitter, hits this mirror, and makes that dot there in the middle of the paper. I can uh, block one of the two beams. I'll block the right beam. And you can see the left beam gets wider as it gets away from the bath. And that needs to cover the whole mirror. Um, the mirror under test is down the tunnel. The distance between the mirror and the bath should be the exact same distance as between the mirror and a Foucault tester. Right, shine some light down there. There's the mirror under test. Now, hopefully you'll never have to do this, but probably you will. And that's align everything. So, uh, to, by the way, to turn the laser on, you want this switch to switch. And you want to, most of the time, you want it all the way full bright. Unless you're looking in here, you want that at full brightness. Now, I'm going to just... Um, point this at the wall here to make things easier for us. Um, now, over here I'm going to move this lens out of the way. And we've got the two beams, one coming off the splitter here, and a second beam coming off of this mirror. So let's look at the wall here. And it, look at my fingers for a second. So I'm going to just grab this, this second mirror here. And now, show the wall. Now I'm going to try to just get them side by side, about the same distance. About that, about an inch. Um, also, can you point back to the inframmer? We want this, we're going to roughly line this up uh, with the frame here, and we don't want the cube perfectly straight on. We want it tilted by, let me just worry about the cube first here. We want the cube tilted a little bit. I've just tilted it probably about five degrees. I'm going to go back a smidge. So I want that cube tilted, not yep. straight on with the laser. Not straight with the laser, yeah, at a slight angle. It's a slight angle, it's clockwise a little. All right, now let me get this again, these two dots lined up. Now really, uh, okay, and then again I want this orange thing lined up with the teal. You're vignetting well. the reference beam. Oh, it's hitting, the, it's hitting the edge of the, okay, so the beam is hitting the edge of this second mirror. So I'm going to turn this black part here a bit. This, this this lower thing I rotated. This this should always be with the bath. This tool, and uh, I don't. But I don't need to loosen it. I'm just gonna not use the tool this time. And okay, again, let's get the two beams about an inch apart. But really, you want to do that far away. So I'm gonna rotate this whole thing. Well, Barry says only rotate this clockwise, never counterclockwise. And if you do it yourself, you'll feel why. <laughs> and then. Um, we want to get those two beams lined up nicely down at the end of the tunnel. Actually, I had it pretty damn good. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the wall here. Um, the next thing you want to do, now that you've got the two beams lined up, is never touch this, this, or the laser again. <laughs> or if you do, you have to start all over again. So I'm going to move this lens in front of the left beam. Barry, why don't you point at the two lights? Oh, it's hard to see. Can you still see it? Oh, you can see it much better now. So, um, the screwdriver's in the way. Um, so we want it perfectly centered. So I uh, need to use the screwdriver. I put it down on this screw here. I had to loosen it a smidge, and I forgot which way I wanted to go. I'm gonna turn off the light, and um, I want to get it really well centered. It's easier to go left and right, so I'm trying to get the up and down first. There, I just tightened that screw. And now I can move this left and right. And you want to write about there. It'd be nice to avoid these two dark, these three dark spots and put the laser beam maybe over here. Um, but I'm just going to center it for now. That's probably good enough. But I think you get slightly cleaner eye grams if you move the laser into that area. Once you get this in the right position, try never to touch it again. Try never to touch this, this, or the laser again. It's okay to touch the whole interferometer, which we're going to have to do in a second. Now, we want this axis to point to the mirror because it's not critical, but it's nice that if you're turning this, you don't have to adjust these all the time. You want that when you're adjusting this, it moves it towards and from the mirror and not also up, down, left, or right. 
So I'm kind of lining that as, you know, pretty well to the mirror. But if I look down the chamber, I see the red dots way over on the right wall. Let me, let me. He can see it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. You can see the mirror and you so can now, see the red dot on the right. Zoom out so you can see the bath here. And I'm going to tilt this orange part until that red dot's on the mirror somewhere. There we go. Preferably somewhere close to the center. So now the bath is all lined up and ready to go. That's quite a bit crooked. That's because the cube is crooked. We could straighten the cube out and start over again. But we're going to get good eye grams with this. This will be fine. Uh, I guess if I had to do it again, I would give it a little less tilt to the cube. The problem with um, not tilting the cube enough, oh, you can't see it. But you'll get these, this is the laser beam that's on the surface of the mirror, which you can't avoid. You have to have the reference beam somewhere, hit, hit the mirror somewhere. It doesn't have to be the center, it could be near the edge, but it has to be hitting the mirror. But there are these other two lights that you can get in the eye gram. Um, and you don't want them in the mirror. If you have the cube too well lined up, you'll get these, you'll get three dots in your eye gram instead of one. Ideally, if you tilt the cube just a tiny bit, those two dots, and these two dots are created by reflections inside the splitter cube. Um, so anyway, they're so far out that you can't even see them at all. But, um, okay, what's next? So that's, how, that's the alignment. Yep, now you're aligned. Now we're aligned. Um, we could see it's, it's, it's really handy to block the reference beam, this, this right-hand beam down here. And then, then that way, instead of having two beams going down in the mirror, you only have one. And so there's fewer things to get you confused. And what I'm showing here is that return beam that's coming off the mirror. And you can see it's focused right about here, and the, the paper's here. Can you see that? Should I turn off the light? Yeah, you can just see it, the dot. Yeah, and, it and you bigger. see it's, it gets bigger. Bigger here. So we need to move the bath closer to the mirror. But now this is about three inches. Um, to the paper. We want to move about half that, so we're going to move about an inch and a half. So let's zoom out here. and let's, I'm going to push the whole bath. Is this, do I have to loosen You'll have that? to loosen that nut. Yep. And we're going to go in. There's an inch and a half. And I can see the return beam is right here at the top of the paper. Does that show up in the camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It shows up. nicely. Um, now there's these nice controls that Barry made down here that's good for the Foucault or the bath that tilt the mirror back there. So I'm going to push this, if you push this up, the mirror tilts up, push it down, the mirror tilts down, you push the other switch left to right, it tilts the mirror left and right. Okay, so I'm going to push this up to show you it's going to go off the top of the paper. Did you see that? I'm going to bring it back down. And um, I want this to focus near the back of the splitter cube. So I'm going to bring this off the top of the paper to make it easier to focus. There, it's off the top of the paper, and now I'll take another sheet of paper, and we'll see where it does come into focus. And it comes into focus a little in front of the paper. So I want to move the whole bath back. I'm going to go back about another half inch. Towards the mirror. Towards the mirror. Yeah, oh yeah, back and <laughs> forward. Um, and now the focus is right about at the paper. Let's go another half inch. So we've got this adjustment too. Oh, this is kind of, yeah, it's pretty well centered. Okay, let's see where this return beam focuses. Uh, focuses right there, which is about the middle of the splitter cube. We're gonna go closer to the mirror, even a little further. Another quarter inch. Okay, that's right about the back of the cube. I may have even gone too far, but we can adjust with, here, point camera. We can adjust, this is the Z knob, which moves the whole, the bath closer and farther. The mirror. So I think we're done with the rough adjustment. Now we need to bring that return beam down. So I'm going to hold the down switch on Barry's magic tilter device. And you can see that circle's moving down. And we want to get the two lined up. That's how we get fringes. You can also, let me go back up for a little bit. You can also use Barry's switches to go left and right. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to put them together. All right. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to look with my eye in the, in the 
cube here. Before we do that, I don't want, we're gonna, yeah, Barry, show the, there's a control here to make the laser dimmer. What's this do, Barry? It's an on off switch. Okay, so if I do that, okay, point, that turns the laser off, on, and now I can dim the laser. You By turning that knob. Yeah. Dim it way down. Yeah, we're gonna go way down. So you don't, I, I, don't, I don't think you can blind yourself, but it's gonna be pretty damn bright. So, um, I got I forgot I gotta remove this paper. Okay, oh, I see fringes. I'm gonna just um, make the fringes a little bit better by <coughs> playing with this. Now, at this point, you probably wanna learn, focus in all that, but it's hard to show you what I'm doing unless we hook up the camera. So I'm gonna hook up the camera. So we have some nice fringes there. I saw about 20 fringes. Make sure the camera's in manual mode. There's an MF here versus autofocus, manual focus. The focus for this lens is this. This is the zoom. We're going to keep that how? anywhere. It's yeah. at the wide, most wide angle, 75 millimeter. And then this is the focus. You want to probably open the test tunnel or shine a flashlight down the test tunnel. Put something near the mirror, or if the flashlight's bright enough, you can just focus on the edge of the mirror. Um, you want to go live view, so to go live, you turn it on here. Let's see, this we want in manual mode. Here, point there. So that, you want in manual mode. Here's the on switch for the camera, in case you missed it. Um, and then push this button to go live view. And now we have the HDMI cable hooked up to this monitor up above. Oh, that's not live view. I gotta hit it again, I guess. Um, yeah, there's our live view. You don't see much. If I turn on this flashlight, maybe. Yeah, we can see a little bit of the mirror. Did you focus this? This is not focused on your mirror. Oh! <laughs> okay, well, now it is. It was focused for my mirror. Oh. Those, the fringes didn't look that bad. We probably should take them over again, though. Yes. Um, anyway, there's the mirror. Zoom out for a sec so people can see the tripod down here. Now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna lower the camera. And um, you can see all that up there, but for me, I'm just looking down here. I'm going to get the camera nice and close to the And I love this tripod. This, 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 being able to turn this thing and go up and down is nice. This is the club's tripod. Hopefully the club will buy this camera too. That's what I saw when I was looking through and I said I saw 10 or so fringes. Um, now, point the camera down to my finger here. I'm going to push down on this. When I push down on this, that's not a good example. I'm going to push to the left on the actual bath here. And now point up there. When I point to, uh, push on the left, you can see the bullseye moves off to the left. When they move the same direction, that means we are inside focus. So we need to move the bath further from the mirror. So, can you point down here? So I'm gonna turn this clockwise. So I'm gonna try about 10 turns, and then you can point up here. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you know, if you forget my rule about, so my rule is if you push on the bath this way and the bullseye moves this way, I call that same. They go the same direction and I, that means you're inside focus. And if you're outside focus, they'll go opposite direction. Um, so inside focus means we're closer to the mirror, outside focus means we're beyond the focus point for the mirror. Anyway, you can see we've got fewer lines here. So I'll keep it up there on the monitor. I'm gonna go a few more turns, two, three, five, six. I'm gonna recenter the vertical, the Y control. Oh, I went the wrong way. It looks like a mess to you, but when you're doing it, it doesn't feel so bad. I'm going to move it a little to the left here. Um, oh, we're outside of focus now. When I push to the left... Oh no, we're still inside focus. Alright, I'm going to do three more turns clockwise on the Z. Alright. So I'm going to turn this one counterclockwise, the X counterclockwise to move them. So the, the bullseye is now right above, and now I'm going to move it down. 
Uh, so I'm going to turn this one counterclockwise. Ooh, that's enough. So we're getting pretty close. To, we're within about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fringes of focus. We're probably within about five fringes of focus. Um, you don't have to get focused perfectly at this point, or ever. This is close enough. How close do you usually get there? I, That's as close as I usually get. I usually get. get closer. I usually get within one wave, but you don't have to. You can, within ten waves is probably good enough. Um, we are probably within three or five waves. I'll go. I'll just go one, two more turns on the on the Z. Now let's adjust the Y. Uh, I lost it. Uh, I'm gonna go two more clockwise turns on the Z. Um, yeah, this is getting silly. At some point, you really don't need to do it. Okay, so now I actually want to give up more fringes because we're gonna start taking pictures. So I'm gonna turn the X. If you turn the X and you get the bullseye off to the right or the left, you're going to have vertical fringes. If you play with the Y knob, you're going to get more horizontal fringes. You want to get some pictures with each. So I'm going to push the button to take a picture. Where's the cable release? Here it is. So I'm going to push this button. Now, we're, we have this camera set to a 4,000 or 2,500th of a second. So I didn't really have to worry that it was jiggling. What's wrong? Oh, okay. <laughs> you looked upset. Um, so it's jiggling like crazy because of vibrations when I jiggle my feet, when we tap the box here. Um, but that's okay because one 2,500th of a second is going to freeze all that motion. Um, we should also take, now if you're just, you're still correcting your mirror and you just want to know if it's undercorrected yet still and by how much, that one picture is probably plenty. But we're going to take a few. I'm going to um, move the Y knob to get some more horizontal fringes take another picture and so on. If you want to do a super accurate evaluation of your mirror, you probably want to do um, at least well, 10, 10 images is good. When you're done using the bath, turn off the laser and let's put this dust cover on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just try to keep some dust off the optics and we want to keep, make sure when you're done, you put that little screwdriver. Do you see it? Thank you. <laughs> it's my you pocket. Sure. Here it is. You like to put it here, Barry? Yeah. Put the screwdriver somewhere there. And I love this doohickey. Keep that somewhere with the bath. Keep it all together. Is there anything else? So we're thinking if the bath is not in use, we'll just put it kind of over here in the test tunnel. Just like the uh, Fuqua testers are just to the side here. Um, although, if it's really not going to be in use for a long time, there you go. Barry's demonstrating. Does it feel stable? Mm -hmm. If you're really not using it, you can put it in that back corner. So, any bath paraphernalia, uh, like this camera, should we put the camera in the back corner? If you can't find the camera, it may be in that back corner.